It's not easy being green, especially when you're a giant. It's particularly hard to deliver a very sustainable, environmentally conscious, uh, and economical to operate home at this scale. But the developers of Windermere in Stamford, Connecticut, say it can be done. There's geothermal heating and cooling, ever so efficient insulation, sustainably harvested lumber, lots of LED and natural light, and the homes are built in clusters to preserve the woods. I think we've pushed the envelope of green pretty far. But can a jumbo size envelope like this really lay claim to being green? People who live and in and own green mansions, are they hypocrites? A little, yeah. Architect Sophie P.S. designed this exquisite 2,000 square foot home near Chapel Hill, North Carolina. People spend a lot of money on square footage and don't spend anything on the quality of the space. The owners, Jan and David Markowitz, moved from a McMansion twice as big. There were rooms that we never even walked into. It never really felt comfortable in terms of the way in which we really like to live. Their new house fits them like a well-tailored suit. The cozy living room next to the kitchen with a banquette instead of a formal dining room. You can look at any part of our society and you can see excess. Architect Sarah Sasanka is author of the Not So Big House series. We're trying to balance our footprint on the planet. We each can make incredible shifts in how we're living to affect that shift. And gradually, I hope personally, that we gravitate to the smaller houses because I don't believe we all need that much square footage. But at Windermere, they say the owners of these huge eco mansions will not owe us or the planet any apologies. But wouldn't smaller be greener? No, it's, it's actually not. It's how you build it, it's where the houses are sited and how they operate. Miles O'Brien, CNN, Stamford, Connecticut.